Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on identifying outliers in SPSS. As always, if you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in the SPSS data editor fictitious data I'll be using for this example. I have an independent variable program that has two levels, psychodynamic and treatment as usual. And I have two dependent variables, depression and substance use. And I'm going to use a couple of different methods to determine if there are outliers in this depression variable and this substance use variable. The two methods I'll be using are different, but the underlying logic is the same. Selections as they are. However, I am going to check off the save standardized values as variables box here at the bottom of this dialog. Save standardized values as variables. So in this case, because we have these two variables, this is going to create two new variables on the data editor. So I click OK. You can see we have the output viewer. I'm going to move back to the data editor, and we have these two new variables, Z depression and Z substance use. So these are the Z scores associated with each of the raw scores in the variables. So in these two new variables containing Z scores, I'm going to be looking for any value that's less than negative 2.68 or greater than 2.68. You can see here that records 18 and 19 for the depression variable are both less than 3. And for the Z substance use variable, record 8 is greater than 3. Notice here that record 11 for substance use is 2.64. That's close to 2.68, but it's still lower. So it would not be considered an outlier. And I'm going to revisit this variable, the score, uh, later on in the video and show you what can happen as you start to modify outlying values. So where did I get the z-score of negative 2.68 and 2.68. Why is that the cutoff for an outlier? In a standard normal distribution, the 25th percentile is negative 0.67 and the 75th percentile is 0.67, both those the z-scores for those quartiles. So the interquartile range is 1.34. If we multiply 1.5 times the interquartile range and add that to the 75th percentile, any value greater than that will be an outlier. If we subtract it from the 25th percentile, any value smaller than that will be an outlier. So if the interquartile range is 1.34z and we multiply it by 1.5, that's 2.01z. And then we add that to the 75th percentile, 0.67z, that's 2.68. And similarly, if we subtract 2.01 from the 25th percentile, negative 0.67, we get negative 2.68z. So in a normally distributed data set, the probability of any value being an outlier is 0.0074 or 0.74 percent. So next I'm going to apply the same method, however using box plots. So to generate box plots for these variables, I'm going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, except this time instead of Descriptives, I'm going to go to Explore. I'm going to move Depression and Substance Use over to this Dependent List List box. And I'm also going to move the Z depression and Z substance use variables over. Under statistics, I'm going to add outliers and percentiles. Click continue. Under plots, I'm going to uncheck stem and leaf. We won't need that for this demonstration. And no changes under options. Click OK. And you can see we have the case processing summary. All the cases are valid. We have the descriptives for all four variables. 
and the percentiles. And then moving down the output, we have extreme values, and then we get to the box plots. So let's start with the box plot for depression. So we have the interquartile range here. That's the rectangle here in this box plot. The top of the rectangle is the 75th percentile, or quartile 3. And the bottom of the rectangle is the 25th percentile, or quartile 1. Then we have the horizontal lines above and below the interquartile range. These are called whiskers. And the top whisker represents the highest value in that variable, not including outliers. And the bottom whisker, the lowest value, not including outliers. So in the case of the depression variable, we see we have the interquartile range, we have the whiskers, and then we have these two points plotted below the bottom whisker. These refer to the record numbers. So 19 and 18, if we move back here to the editor, we have 18 and 19. And 18 has a z-score that is lower than record 19, 3 point, negative 3.56 compared to negative 3.01. So moving back to the output, we can see that 18 is plotted lower on this box plot. Continuing down the output, we have substance use. And here we can see that even though the z-score method yielded only one outlier for substance use, and that was record 8, record 11, which was close, it still comes up as an outlier. So using this method, both records 8 and 11 are above the top whisker. So even though both of these methods are based on the same logic, the interquartile range, we have a different result because this method using the box plot is based on the sample and the method here on the data editor is based on the population. So important to recognize that the methods are calculating outliers in a slightly different manner. Moving down to the z-score for depression and the z-score for substance use, I put these variables in to be processed to show you here that the results will be the same for the variables of z-scores as they are for the raw data. So 18 and 19 as outliers and records 8 and 11 as outliers. One last important point with this record 11, the one with the z-score of 2.64, not an outlier here on the data editor, but an outlier using the box plot feature in SPSS. Using the z-score method or the box plot method in SPSS, it's important to be aware that a value being categorized as an outlier or not is determined by all the values in the variable. So if we were processing the substance use variable and we're looking at this value 95 and this value 88 and we realize that this value of 95 is a miskeyed entry. Let's say it's supposed to be 55. So we could change this to 55, ignore the 88 because the z-score is less than 2.68. However, if I change this to 55 and I rerun the z-scores, so it's going to generate two new variables, descriptive statistics, descriptors, I'm just going to rerun the same process. And look over here at the new z-score associated with 88. Now it's above 2.68, 3.02. And of course, the variable we changed from 95 to 55, record 8, that's no longer an outlier, but record 11 is now an outlier. So whenever you change any of these values in a variable where you're looking for outliers, make sure you recalculate the z-scores or rerun the box plots to make sure that no new outliers have emerged based on the changes.
I hope you found this video on identifying outliers in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.